So I hope you took me seriously and you had a real look at at least three of the midpoints of the movies on your list. I swear this is work that is going to be with you for the rest of your writing life. And now that you've had a chance to look at some midpoints, let's talk about them. I said that a midpoint is not necessarily just one scene. Well, in Jaws, as we see, the midpoint is a whole sequence, a very highly suspenseful, involved sequence. The town officials have refused to shut down the beaches, so the Coast Guard is patrolling the ocean, and Sheriff Brody is out there on the sand keeping watch, as if that's going to prevent a shark attack. And almost as if it's aware of the whole plan, the shark swims into an unguarded harbor where it attacks a man, and for a horrifying moment we think it has also killed Brody's son. It's a huge climax and adrenaline rush, and it's not over yet, because in the next scene, the mayor finally writes that check so that Quint can hunt down the shark. And there's a big character change that happens here, too, because now Brody's family has been threatened. So now it's personal. Now it's personal is a dynamic that you often see in male-driven action stories. So while all along Brody has not wanted to have anything to do with the actual shark hunt, now he commits to going out with Quint and Hooper on the boat. And that also leads to a huge location change as we see that little boat headed out into open water, the shark's territory, and it's shot through the jawbone of a shark. There's nothing like a thematic doorway, is there? A very different midpoint occurs in Raiders of the Lost Ark at exactly 60 minutes into the film. Indy has discovered that the Nazis are digging in the wrong place of the archaeological site. Now he goes down into that ancient chamber, the map room, and uses a staff of the correct height and the medallion to pinpoint the exact location of the Ark. This scene is quiet and involves only one person, but it's mystically powerful. Indy stands like Moses, or God, over the miniature of the temple city, and the beam of light comes through the crystal like light from heaven. It's all a foreshadowing of the final climax, in which God intervenes in much the same way. It's very effective, with lots of subliminal manipulation going on. And of course, at the end of the scene, Indy has all the information he needs to go get the Ark. I also want to point out that as we see in Raiders, the midpoint is often a mirror image of the final climax. It's an interesting device to use, and you might find that you've been using it without even being aware of it. And we see another very different midpoint in Silence of the Lambs, the very famous quid pro quo scene, where Clarice bargains personal information with Lecter to get the next clue for the case. Clarice is under a ticking clock here because Catherine Martin has been kidnapped and Clarice knows they have only three days to find her before Buffalo Bill kills her. Clarice goes in at first to offer Lecter what he desires most, a transfer to a federal prison away from Dr. Chilton and with a view. But the deal is not enough for Lecter. He demands that Clarice do exactly what her boss has warned her never to do. Lecter wants her to swap personal information for clues, a classic deal with the devil game. After Clarice confesses painful secrets, 
Lecter does give her the clue that she's been looking for to search for Buffalo Bill through the sex reassignment clinics. And then as we see so often, there is a second climax within the midpoint, what I like to think of as a double punch. The film cuts to the killer in his basement, standing over a pit and forcing a terrified Catherine to put lotion on her skin. It's a horrifying curtain and it really drives home the stakes. Now, in a romance, the midpoint is often sexual or emotional, what I said Hollywood calls sex at 60. In Sense and Sensibility, the midpoint is a really emotionally wrenching scene where horrible Lucy Steele reveals to Eleanor that she's been engaged to Edward secretly for five years. And by now, we are so committed to Edward and Eleanor's love that we are just as devastated as she is and just as shocked that Edward would have lied to her. And this is also a double punch midpoint because we also find out that Marianne, Eleanor's sister, has also been abandoned by her love interest. Well, that's a game changer. What are the sisters gonna do now? The midpoint will often lock the heroine into a course of action and sometimes locks the heroine into an actual location. At the midpoint of the Hunger Games, Katniss and the other contestants are dropped into the game arena. You don't get more locked into a situation than that. And now the stakes have become real and irrevocable. They're not training anymore. They're fighting to the death. If your story is sagging in the middle, the first thing you should look at is your midpoint scene. And here's a huge tip. In the first half of act two, the heroine is very, very often winning. And then something happens at the midpoint that changes everything and things start to go downhill very quickly. Suddenly, in Act 2, Part 2, the protagonist starts to lose, and lose big. So while the first half of Act 2 will be energetic and forward-moving, the second half tends to be a downward spiral into chaos and despair. It's a clear difference between day and night, external versus internal, yang and yin. And at the end of Act 2, Part 2, everything is going to crash to a halt in the all is lost moment. Now, of course, there are exceptions, like in Jaws, Brody is losing for the first half of Act 2, and then he continues to lose in the second half of Act 2. But I hope you see that just that pattern, first half winning, second half losing, gives you a roadmap to that long and terrifying Act 2. <laughs>